and we are live inshallah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya'i wal mursaleen Ala Sayyidina Muhammad As-Sadiq al-Wa'ad al-Ameen Wa ala alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin Wa ashabihi al-Kiram Wa man tabi'ahu bi ihsan ila yawm al-Din I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Accepted the fasting of every single one of you today And I pray that he makes fasting easy For the rest of the month and I also pray that we get a chance, inshallah, to return to our masajids as soon as possible because we all miss our dear mosque, our beloved mosques. And I also find the opportunity to pray for all of those who have passed away today uh, because of the coronavirus. From what I have read today, um, the death number of people was the highest since this uh, coronavirus pandemic has uh, been in place so we pray that god you know shows mercy to all of those who passed away and uh, helps the rest of us deal with the situation you know even though we may be healthy there are definitely a lot of challenges that we have to go through so may god uh, help us all through those so one of the things that i want to talk today to you is the tafsir or the exegesis of Surah to Yusuf. As you know, Surah to Yusuf is one of the most elaborated surahs in the Quran. In other words, there is from the beginning of the surah all the way to the end of the surah, the main thing is a story. But that's not just any story. That is a story of one of the best prophets of God. And that is Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. Christians, they have him in their books. Jewish uh, people, they have it in their books as well. Yusuf alayhi salam or Joseph as it is called in English language. And the story is very similar. The story that we have in the Quran is similar to the story that it exists in the previous revelations. Um, so I'm not going to go through the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam today. Because it's just impossible to cover the whole thing within 20-25 minutes that we have tonight. But what I'm going to try to do is focus on some lessons that, that we can draw from this uh, beautiful surah and the story. Why am I going through Surah to Yusuf today? The reason is because uh, today we were reciting Juz number 12. And in Juz number 12, you have Surah to Yusuf a.s. With a group that we usually recite at 5.30 p.m. We already went through some details, but uh, now I'm going to go through some more details, inshallah. So this way we can have uh, a picture, a large picture of uh, what happened or what are some of the lessons that we can draw from this beautiful surah. First of all, it's important to mention that people came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they said, what are the names of the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. Now, I want you to think about 1400 years ago um, in Arabia, who was distanced from uh, Palestine. And now all of a sudden, knowing all the 11 names of the brothers of Yusuf, this was not something normal for people to know. And even people who were... Um, informed people who had some knowledge about the previous revelations you know they would have a certain knowledge but not to a point where they would memorize and they would know 11 names of a tradition that they don't even practice themselves right so uh, Quraysh Arabs back then they didn't practice Judaism uh, they didn't practice Christianity either even though there were some pockets here and there of Christians and Jews but this was not the predominant religion back, back then. It was idol worshipping. Or a few individuals here and there, they would uh, stick with uh, Hanif, with the religion that Sayyidina Ibrahim salam came with. So for somebody to know all of these names of the brothers of Yusuf was something really phenomenal. And they knew that Prophet Muhammad did not know these names. Therefore, they went to him and they asked him, what are the names of the brothers of Yusuf? There were 11 brothers. And 
Prophet والسلام, received the revelation from God and based on that revelation, he was able to mention one by one all of these names. Whoever wanted to believe could believe because that is a miracle that Prophet والسلام, shown to them. And whoever did not believe, they just, no matter what you show to them, they're not going to believe because they're going to always come up with some excuses or they're going to come up with uh, accusations and saying that this is not a miracle, this is whatever the case may be, as it was the case with many prophets before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So why is the story of Yusuf unique in the Quran? This surah is very close to me because I wrote a lot about this surah before. And I can tell you that the most amazing thing about this surah is uh, putting out there the outer character of Prophet Yusuf matching with his inner character. So the way how the story develops in the Quran it, it uh, sheds light on his outer character, but also we learn his inner character as well. And we see that these both outer and inner character or the, the outer expression and the inner uh, manifestation, they matched and they were balanced together. People overall, they have complexities. And among these complexities are the complexities of having inability to balance their characters. In other words, outside, to the outside world, they seem as a lion, if I can use a metaphor here. They, can, they look like lions, but deep inside, they're like rabbits. I'm using these two animals because they're kind of opposite. They have opposite characters. Lion is very strong and brave. Rabbit is weak and not as brave as lion. So there are individuals like that where they're expressing something outside, but then inside they're completely different. So, uh, and uh, the question is, yeah, can we elaborate a little bit more inside? When we say inside, uh, we mean their relation with their, with their Lord. For example, in front of the people, they seem as righteous people. MashaAllah, their shakliyat, their appearances, you know, they look very good, but then inside, when it comes to performing the prayers, when it comes to giving the charity, when it comes to patience, when it comes to commanding the others to do good things, when it comes to prohibiting the evil, all of these things are far away from this. So they care about how they're going to express themselves or how they're going to appear in front of the people. But in their relation with the creator, their level is very low. I mean, they're at a very, very low level. What else? Uh, a part of this inner character is also these people's relations with the close ones, the relatives and the close people they have in their family. Like outside there, they appear so good people and amazing people, but then all of a sudden within their family, they're very brutal people. They are uh, unbearable people. So that's also another imbalance right there. Um, and the list can go on. So it's, it's in the relation with the creator and also in the relation with their close ones. These are uh, some of the sources, if I may say so, where a person can express his or her inner personality there with the creator and with those close ones. Um, but Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, we see that he had a very positive uh, character deep inside of him. He was very positive. And the way how he expressed himself outwardly was very righteous and was very good as well. Because now sometimes a person can say, well, we know a lot of individuals who are able to balance their outer and their inner personalities. But unfortunately, they're bad people. You know, they do bad outside and inside they do bad as well. And we're not talking about these kind of people because to be like them, it's easy. But to reach perfections from the outer perspective and the inner perspective, that is very hard. And somebody who can show or demonstrate a, a great example is Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam of this uh, inner 
uh, and uh, outer um, character. Here's another thing too. Uh, we also believe that Prophet Muhammad والسلام, was khayrun nas. He was the best of people. He was the Habibullah. He was the beloved messenger of God. There is no single person on the face of this earth that walked who was equal when it comes to manners, when it comes to righteousness, when it comes to all the good qualities like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa No single person on the face of the earth. Yet the Quran... Uh, Allah decided to go through the whole surah from the beginning all the way to the end, a long chapter. It is not a short chapter. Many, many pages are there talking about a prophet who was not a prophet sent to Arabs. And the prophet who was sent to the Arabs and to the other nations who followed Islam was Prophet Muhammad. So uh, Joseph or, or uh, Yusuf was a prophet that came from Bani Israel, from the Jewish people. But why did God choose to have a surah in the Quran, a chapter in the Quran that talks so long about this? Again, there can be a lot of interpretations that people can elaborate into. And we do not know ultimately the reason why. We're not uh, pretending here that we know everything and we can just, you know... Uh, say for sure that this is what it is but if i can put my own if i can insert my own uh, understanding here is uh, it shows that islam is a universal religion it shows that islam also recognizes the previous prophets and their revelations it shows to muslims that this message was there since the first Created since Adam السلام, and it went on generations through generations of prophets all the way to Prophet Muhammad in other words it is not an uh, exclusive religion meant to be only for a particular time or meant to be for only particular individuals or only one particular nation or race Islam is a religion that came to the whole world the example that the Quran calls the believers to follow, it is the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is a valid example for all the times, for all the races and all the individuals out there that exist. And they will exist until the end of the earth. The Quran says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, O Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, but as a mercy for all the worlds. So this is the beauty of Islam, that is that it is an inclusive religion and not exclusive religion. We do believe in Jesus. We do believe that he was inspired and he, he received the revelation from God. We do believe that those people who followed him and who uh, were righteous people, they will go in, in, in heaven. We do believe that those who followed Musa alayhi salam and they were righteous people, they will also go in heaven. So, but the question is, 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 is it the same approach from other religions towards Muslims as well? And the answer is no. As a matter of fact, some, they deny each other as well. And when it comes to us, we are completely denied by them as uh, being a legit religion or having Prophet Muhammad inspired by God and uh, being a valid religion. This is complete. Otherwise, they would have been perhaps Muslims, you know. But it is because they don't accept the message of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that they are not Muslims. It's a very common sense. It's a, it's a very basic understanding here. But again, what I'm trying to, 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 to say here is that Islam is a very inclusive religion, but also we take into consideration the fact that people, because somebody can say, oh, do you accept the Christianity nowadays the way how it is? Or do you accept the Judaism nowadays how it is? And we can say that there is still truth in them, but we know that the hand of the human has touched the, the scriptures. And we don't know anymore what is real and what is an insertion from the humans. Uh, but ultimately, we do believe that these previous revelations, they came from a divine creator. 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the only creator, the creator of the universe, the creator of the human. But again, um, this doesn't make us less uh, in, uh, in, in, inclusive people. We do um, recognize their messages. We do recognize those prophets. We do uh, accept those prophets. And we are commanded in the Quran, as a matter of fact, uh, we do not um, differentiate in a sense that we do not believe in some and reject the others among the prophets of God. So we do accept all of them as they were sent with a revelation from God to the humanity to guide them on the right path. So I can tell you, I can say, going back again to Sayyidina Yusuf, السلام, the story that is uh, mentioned in the surah, I can go back and say that, you know what? This is something amazing which shows uh, inclusivity of Islam and it shows that righteousness was always there. There were people who were very righteous as well because we know the fact. I mean, we know the fact that Prophet ﷺ was the best of the human out there. However, the Quran is uh, a message that as it wants to tell us that uh, to, there are people who reach this level of Insan Kamil. Insan Kamil is a human that has, le has reached perfection levels. And yes, there are possibilities for individuals to reach these, perfection, uh, these perfect levels. Uh, what kind of perfection we're talking about? We're not ex excluding the fact that even those who are called perfect humans are going to be free from mistakes, right? So somebody can say, well, they're not perfect humans then. Well, yes, they, they can be perfect humans, why? Because in the eyes of God, God is looking at them with the eye of mercy, with the eye of forgiveness, with an eye of acceptance. And they are written already in the books of those who are righteous people, regardless of making a mistake here and there. So from that understanding or from that perspective, we understand that these humans are considered to be uh, perfect humans. Again, because in the eyes of God, they are considered as such. And somebody may ask the question, how do you know that? Well... Uh, for example, you have uh, the Quran that talks about these individuals, these prophets, they were all perfect humans. And you also have even the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he talks about uh, individuals, companions who earned paradise while they were still alive, walking on the face of this earth. And you have the 10, Al-Mubashira Bil-Jannah, for example, Al-Ashra Al-Mubashira Bil-Jannah. And you have many other individuals during the life of Prophet والسلام, who received the glad tidings of paradise while they were still alive. So isn't this a sign that these individuals are perfect humans? And again, that doesn't mean that they didn't make mistakes. Sayyidina Abu Bakr made mistakes. Sayyidina Umar made mistakes. Sayyidina Ali made mistakes. Sayyidina Uthman made mistakes. Many of these companions made mistakes. But as I said, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have earned that level of perfection. And they are complete, perfect human beings. This is a very important understanding. And why am I explaining this? Because we have to emulate these people. We have to resemble these individuals in our characters from the uh, outer perspective and also from our uh, inner perspective. Zahiriyan wa batiniyan. Outer and inner. Uh, esoteric, exoteric, as they say. Again, I'm not going to get into many technical terms here. But let me... Uh, go quickly and focus on some of the nuances of the surah and bring to you some uh, beautiful characteristics of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam because we're saying that he was a complete human being perfect human being. what made him complete well remember first thing is that he was from the muhsinin muhsinin muhsin is somebody who excels in doing good somebody who looks out there to perfect himself through progress, right? So somebody who is a muhsin is an individual who looks for opportunities there to perfect himself constantly until he or she reaches that level of perfection. It's not me calling Yusuf with the name muhsin. Quran calls, إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and so on. So that's, you know, that's the meaning of that right there. That's what really made him unique and it helped him open the doors for so many good things to be adopted by his character. Now, remember uh, when he was uh, young, 
he was sold he was sold to uh, you know to this wazir this uh, person who had influence in politics and was a governor if we may say so in Egypt in one of the provinces in Egypt during the time of the pharaoh one of the pharaohs and um, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam the moment again I'm I'm skipping the beginning I'm jumping right into when he was into the house of his wazir of this governor what happened to him was amazing because he was a very beautiful person that's why we said God matched his outer look with his inner personality here because he's known to be a very beautiful person and uh, as a result of this one he was uh, provoked by the wife of this governor in other words the wife of this governor wanted to sleep with him she said come on she said and he said god forbid god is the one who's looking at me god is the one who's observing uh, he does not give success to those people who mess around like this she was about to commit to that immoral act and he was about to do so as well if it was not for one of the signs if it was not for one of the signs of his lord and now here the commentators of the quran they go into details by saying that uh, one of the things is that um, he was able to see the uh, the true picture of zina, of adultery. Like instead of seeing Zuleikha, who was also a beautiful lady, instead of seeing her face, to him it appeared as the face of zina was right in front of him, of the adultery. And he just left it. Another, among the commentators here, uh, Ismail Haqqi Bursawi, one of the great Ottoman uh, commentators of the Quran, in his uh, Ruh al-Bayan, he says that it was the face of Sayyidina Dawood, uh, Sayyidina uh, uh, Yaqub, السلام, the father of Sayyidina Yusuf, who came, who appeared right in front of him and seeing the face of his father. Now, his father was not just a father, but it was a prophet at the same time. It was his spiritual guide at the same time. So when he saw the face of his father, he just, he was afraid right there. So he was, he stopped from doing what he was about to do as well. But the, I mean, the question is, okay, so what's amazing about this one? I mean, this is a miracle of God. We understand what made him so special. How? Well, he deserved to receive such miracles in order for him to be prevented from those evil acts. All right, so the key word here is deserved. And when you are deserving, when you strive for righteousness, when you strive for, for the truth, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be the one who is going to take care of you during those difficult times. Overall, he takes care of all of us, whether it is difficult or easy times, no matter what, he takes care of us. But he is going to cause a miracle to happen in, in order for you to stop doing that evil thing that you are about to do. I think that's, that's fascinating right there. And this is what we see with Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, not in one occasion, but in many occasions. And we see this with many prophets of God. They were helped, they were assisted divinely from the divine during the times when they were about to be destroyed or during the times when they were about to have um, problems, go through a lot of trials, Allah saved them in many, in many cases. Why? Because they deserve. They have worked for that. So the message here is that you and me, we all have to strive as much as possible to be deserving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. Now, um, we also see in uh, his story, and I don't want to, I can keep going on and on, but let me just mention one quick fact right here too. Uh, it, it was well known that uh, according to the verse of the Quran, 
she told to her own husband that it was him, as a matter of fact, who wanted to come after her. And, you know, she tried to also bring uh, people around, some ladies, and, you know, try to make her case that, you know what, yeah, actually it was me, but look how beautiful he is. So who could resist such a person like him, living with him on a daily basis and, you know, not to commit to what I was thinking of committing. It's very hard for a human being to resist that. Um, so she was trying to make her case here and there, but of course it was her fault ultimately. But then she says that if you're not going to accept this, if you're not going to um, uh, accept to, to, uh, to uh, submit to my wills, then you're going to end up going to jail. Oh Lord, he said, then if that's the case, then jail is way better off for me than being submitted to their wills. And that was the case. Prophet, Ali, uh, Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, he decided to reject those offers. He decided to reject living as a free man, but under some sin versus living as an imprisoner in the, in the prison and suffering tremendously. And remember the, the conditions of jails back then or prisons, they were not like the conditions that uh, people have nowadays. Right? They were completely different conditions. They suffered a lot more in those, in those prisons. So he decided to be in prison. So this way he doesn't fall a victim of sin. Nowadays, we can sell our religion. We can sell our identity. We can sell our faith. We can sell our values for a very cheap price. Yes. And I'm talking about Muslims living in the West. Not all of them for sure. And we have some amazing people who are striving right there. And because of these individuals, as a matter of fact, we, we can be proud, you know, of uh, living as Muslims. And it has, uh, it has become easier for us to live as Muslims because some other people, they were not afraid of showing their values out there in society. And we have to recognize these facts here. But overall, though, that, you know, there is a lot of people who are afraid, not only afraid, but they're ready to sell their values. For what? For the sake of looking like Tom, for the sake of being the, in the company of Brittany, for the sake of uh, people not look at that person as a strange person, whatever the reasons may be out there. But the story of Yusuf talks the opposite. It gives us a courage and it gives us, you know, the ability to be strong believers, to live our faith the way how we are supposed to, and not to be afraid of people and the circumstances that may be created sometimes. Don't give up your values. Live according to your values as a Muslim. And when he was in jail, I will close it with this one, inshallah. When he was in jail, among the first things that he did was uh, interpreting I don't want to say among the first things, among the things, let's say, among the things that he did when he was in jail was the interpretation of the dreams of his friends, of his companions there. This, go, this Quran talks about it, previous revelations as well, they talk about this one, this story. And I'm not going to get into the story because, again, you are aware of the story, you know, the seven cows, this and that, which is very famous in the Quran, like I said. And it has uh, a great it has great lessons to learn from, and it shows the ability of this uh, messenger of God. But I don't want to stop there. I want to stop at one thing that he did amazing, uh, and that was before he even gave the interpretation of the dream. Because these companions of the prison they knew that he had the ability to give the interpretation of the dreams that they saw earlier. So before he even went into the interpretation of the dream, he mentioned he, uh, he invited them to Islam. He invited them to the path of God. And um, he said, uh, 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 He said, 
يا صاحبي السجن أرباب متفرقون خير أم الله الواحد القحار ما تعبدون من دونه إلا أسماء سميتموها so there are many verses so he's having as a matter of fact he's preaching to his to his companions in jail and he's telling them that you know what is it better to worship so many idols or instead worshiping one Lord the creator of everything and I am the one who followed he says the religion of Sayyidina Ibrahim these are my fathers Ibrahim and Ishaq and Jacob and we did not worship any other deities beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having the ability not to worship not to have partners in worship with God but worshiping one God alone or having the ability of interpreting the dreams and giving you a correct answer in what you're looking for in what you're asking that is from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words the credits they don't go to me but the credits they go to the one who created me see these are very I mean we read these verses but we never have the time to really contemplate and these are very strong messages that are being delivered in the surah right in front of our eyes you know recognition that this is not from me but it is from lord and recognition that having the ability or the recognition that having the ability to be on the straight path to be guided on the straight path is a matter of fact a fadl fadl means grace it's a favor that you are being blessed with and this is what he tries to explain to the to, to explain to these people before he goes into the uh, into the interpretation and then later on he goes into the interpretation by saying ya sahibi sijni amma ahadukuma fasqi rabbahu khamra wa amma al-akhar you know one of you is going to be executed another one is going to serve you know the king and so on then it goes into the details by explaining the dream of uh, you know of these two companions of the of the of the prison so i, I mean it's full of wisdom full of wisdom uh, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us among those individuals who are able, who have the capability of uh, recognizing these jewels of the Quran and also make us among those who have the ability to practice based on this understanding. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. If there is any uh, comment or any concern or any question, I'll be more than happy to take it now, inshallah. Uh, there is no questions on Zoom, Imam. Yes, uh, Sheikh, no uh, question on Facebook either. Alhamdulillah. All right, so inshallah, we'll see you guys then tomorrow. Barakallah fikum. And uh, inshallah, everything goes well uh, tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Marie